Hi everybody, I'm Linda Rugos and I'm going to talk about the communicating with dogs. And today I'm going to talk about the universal hand signal. Who am I? Never mind, you can read it later. <laughs> what is the universal hand signal? <clears throat> that is an all round gesture that a dog and other mammals understand without being taught. It is easy, fast, efficient, force-free part of a normal conversation you have with your dog. And it's a request, not an order. And it is less stressful for the dog than any other approach I know. We'll come back to that later. <clears throat> so what I do when a coworker barges into my office and I need to finish my phone call. Show the hand. And it's the same thing I do when I don't want my friend here to put his nose to the grindstone, so to speak, so to speak, it's a metal brush. I use a universal hand signal when I want to say, I got this, take it easy, you had enough, don't do this please, wait a second, I'll be back, don't worry. That's what we call it, why we call it universal. Here. Yeah. Don't jump, please. Okay. But please note that if your dog has a habit or a behavior you want to redirect, always ask yourself why the habit arose in the first place. Is it overexcited, hungry, scared? Is it a learned behavior? And always manage the environment or your own actions so that you don't keep putting the dog in a difficult position. Don't say, you want to play, you want to play, you want to play, and then get upset because he wants to play. <clears throat> well, I'm calm. I don't speak or make sounds. I don't look directly at him. I show him the palm of my hand and wait for him to stop. And if he doesn't get it, I turn my side to him too for a few seconds only. Like this. Or this. What is so in both videos? It was not a setup. I played with it a little first and then decided it was time to stop on the first video. And on the second, I was just trying to get him away from the traffic a little bit too fast and got him excited. I don't need cues. Cues will actually contradict my actions. I don't need treats or praise. You can praise the dog, but not in the moment and not directly after, because it has nothing to do with a hand signal. I don't need any props and I don't need any training. It's a natural conversation. You don't have to train it. If the dog is begging, you can show the hand signal. I always shared my food with my dogs at the table, no problem. When they had enough, I showed the hand signal and they went away. And this didn't make them beg. They came to investigate and taste if they could. And when it was over, it was over. If I was eating something they shouldn't have, I just showed the hand signal. And yes, sure, if you hate the idea of letting your dogs come to the table, it's okay, it's up to you. But it can be done without any problems at all. Like this. He wants a goodies. Yeah, the video is on loop. It's the same thing. He didn't come back. Uh, mostly people do a lot of mistakes in the beginning. Looking at the dog, trying to get eye contact, talking or trying to add a cue, giving treats or praise as success, uh, thrusting your hand out like a constable in a traffic situation. Stop! No, no, don't do that. Or chasing your mind. 
don't ask to stop biting your hands and then wiggle your fingers in front of his face again. Or trying to repeat until the side result in the same situation. Don't do that. It's not an obedience exercise. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Usually it works. Here we are having a dog that is very excited to see another dog. My friend here, she goes between our equipage and the other one, and she shows the hand signal when this priard gets overexcited and wants to get to the other dog. We actually started with much wider distance between us and uh, was coming to a much calmer place and had only a few meters between. <clears throat> Here I stand in front of the dog showing the hand signal because he was yapping hysterically at cars and there was a car approaching. I stand in between, I show the hand signal and the dog sat down to watch the view instead of barking hysterically. You can use it for wait in the car, please. Sometimes I have to explain a little bit. You're not coming into the car. And you're not going out of the car. It's useful sometimes when you have multiple dogs in your household. What you cannot use the hand signal for, you can't use it for obedience exercises, not party tricks, not stop and stay there. It's not a cue and it's not a guaranteed preset reaction. This is a choice of cooperation and a suggestion, not a cue or command. Like if you're going to the kitchen and don't want the dog to follow, <clears throat> you give the hand signal once or twice. If the dog follows anyway, nothing happens. But you suggest that you want to go alone and it would be nice if the dog didn't follow and very often they do comply. And sometimes it looks like a stay, like here. I make sure he sees my hand signal. No, he follows anyway, and I give the hand signal again. He lies down of his own accord. I didn't ask him, we have not trained this. This is the first time he actually has seen me go to this kitchen. <laughs> it's not the first time he's seen a hand signal, but not in this situation. He just lies there waiting for me. He wants to see, so he followed a bit and then he let down. You absolutely can or should use it even when you get up and leave the room like here and don't want the dog to follow. When the doorbell rings and you go to open the door, when you're leaving the house, but would return if your dog jumps, humps, or puppy bites you. And if the dog is apprehensive about something and you or a helper is taking charge of the situation, then the hand signal means I'm taking care of this. Same as if you go to open the door, you show the palm of your hand to say, I'll take care of this. And there's hundreds of situations where you can use it and many where you should use it. For example, when leaving the house. <clears throat> Here I decide after a while we have played enough. I don't play a tug a lot. I show the hand signal, he just goes to play with his toy by himself. So very many people ask me, do I have proof of this, that it works? Yes, I do. Do I have proof that it is positive for the dog? Yes. Um, Agnes uh, Validalo from Norway, and also Aurelien and Kristina gomez uh, They uh, You can look at the information here later. They did a lot of pulse studies with dogs, where they strapped on a pulse measurement device, 
I don't know the proper name. And they read the polls in real time while filming the dog. And it uh, happened that when the owner just left the room, the polls would shoot up and slowly go down even after the owner came back. When the owner showed the hand signal, in some cases, the pulse didn't even rise. In some cases, it went a little bit up and then dropped again very easily. And of course, there are a lot of trainers that use it on a regular basis. I use it all the time and a lot of other trainers use it all the time and would never go back to not using it. What we don't have is proof why it works. Actually, we don't know. In some cases, we think that the hand signal looks as the same thing as when a dog goes between dogs that are squabbling to make sure peace is maintained. But uh, that is only in some situation. Why it really works at all, we really don't know. So if there are scientists out there, you have a new job. <clears throat> but actually, don't just take my word for it. You can try it. Worst case scenario, you do it wrong, or your dog is not in the headspace to take it in, and it doesn't work. If it doesn't work the first time, remember that if you were to train this, it would take way longer. I mean, you can condition a dog not to jump. You can condition a dog to wait. You can condition a dog not to bite, but to kiss hand, for example. But then you have to do it with each and every situation. There's no universal command or cue or anything. The hand signal is actually working in all of these situations as long as you are able to take responsibility of the situation, explain what you want, you just showing your hand, and the dogs are so willing to be a part of that conversation and comply with your wishes. <clears throat> and best case scenario, you have a tool that saves you a ton of cues, treats, corrections, and time. And it makes sense to the dog. The dog understands what you want and is so happy to do it. Have a nice communication with your dog. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Uh, let me just see if we can stop sharing the power. Can you try and see if you can stop sharing? Because then I think we can both be on, on the screen. Um, Ba, 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 ba. Yes, I'm not very good at this yet. Yes, you are. <laughs> you are very good at sharing the PowerPoint. Okay, yes, we're both here now. I can see that. Okay. So, how many times should we say this? We had a chat before we went live, Linda, and we were uh, saying that this is something you have to do to believe it. <laughs> mm. Instead of asking, of course, you can ask us all the questions right now, but afterwards you should really go and try it in different situations. And Linda Absolutely. showed you uh, many, many good examples. I did get one question. The question is, should we do anything special with our body? Uh, it depends. If your dog is jumping, for example, or I have this beautiful Rhodesian Ridgeback, uh, as a client and he will run and jump and uh, he will hang from your shoulders and hump happily away at your hips. <laughs> I usually turn, yeah. turn away from him before he gets to me and show the hand signal like that. With a little schnauzer you saw there, he didn't give up when I gave him the hand signal, he was too excited. So I turned my body a little bit and then he went down. Uh, you can do it standing up, you can do it sitting down, you can do it from your bed when you're half asleep and your dog wants some attention. You can just show the hand signal to say, not now, please. I'm busy, I'm tired. 
do something else. And a question, and a question I get a lot is, for how long should we show the the, the hand? Is there is there like a minimum requirement of time or something? It is uh, also depending on the situation. Like uh, with the begging video, she showed the hand, the dog went away, and then it's not an issue anymore. Usually, it will take like one, two, three. And uh, that's not even three seconds. And sometimes like with the dog in the car, it could be useful to show the hand signal until the door is almost closed. Okay. Because dogs want to jump out usually. Yeah. <laughs> and also when you're, <clears throat> when you're leaving the house or when you're going from one room to another, show the hand signal before you get up from where you're sitting, start walking, and then you, you can show the hand signal all the time if you want. I prefer to just show it a few seconds or not even that. And then halfway through the room, I show it again. And when I go through the door or into another room, I show it again. Uh, I never use it more than three times, I think, because that will be a nagging. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, the, the point is, I can teach anybody to say a word by conditioning and treating them every time they say the word. But if the word is, for example, a church, it will take a long time to teach you to say a church. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to catch the moment or repeating the word and giving you treats every time you say it, you will still have no idea what a church is until I show you. True, yeah. And when I have shown you a church, you get habituated to, to a church, <laughs> no, no seat names, then maybe you start to figure out what it's for. Mm -hmm. uh, we got another question. We got a puppy, German Shepherd of nine weeks. He's awesome in, any, uh, in every way, only he does a lot of puppy biting. Sometimes mm -hmm. nibbling, sometimes really hurtful. How can we handle this? Uh, if you sit with your hands in your lap, I have to do it like this because I don't want to turn my PC upside down. And he comes, nah, 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 nah. His, your hand is in his mouth. Use the other hand. You don't have them both. When he lets go, <clears throat> maybe immediately, maybe not for half an hour, puppies are puppies. When he lets go, be sure to keep your hands away from the dog. If it comes from that direction, turn just your arm a little bit. Maybe he runs around and try from the other side, turn a little bit. When, he is, when your fingers are anywhere near and he starts to jump, jump down on them, not jump, chomp. <laughs> <laughs> Show the hand signal and just keep in mind that your hands should be out of his face. Don't do like this, ah, you wanna play, you wanna play, and then get excited if he actually wants to play and he does it by biting. That's his normal behavior. That is how he would play with his little mates. That is how he would pester his mom. And at nine weeks, he's uh, genetically engineered to be with his mom and siblings for at least another month before he starts playing outside. So he, he doesn't have a clue. And um, I think it's important to mention that um, a lot of people want to praise, especially their puppies for doing the right thing. Yes. So when, once we, what happens, Linda, when we start, when, when the dog stops biting because you show the hand signal yeah. and then we go, oh, good puppy. <laughs> Whatever. Yay! We're going to continue playing. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. You have to shut up a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> For example, wait until he finds a toy to play with, and then say, "Oh yes, that is brilliant. You're such a smart dog. Thank you." So that means you don't have to give um, a verbal reward or anything. At you the shouldn't, because that's what we're taught to immediately give the, the reward for these circumstances. Yes, this is not an obedience exercise. 
there's no point in treating actually or praising. It is contradicting the message of the hand. Yeah. Because you're asking for calm, you're asking for independence, and then there's no no way on earth that you can praise or treat to enhance or reinforce that moment. I, um, I, I, <laughs> no, I could decide to teach Lisbeth a word like within the church and then praise her wildly every time she said it, but it will have no meaning to her. And dogs, when they're playing, they go bite, 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 or so, rah, 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 with the mouth, uh, with the sounds. That means I'm playing. So if you praise your dog, you give the hand signal, he complies immediately and you go, oh, what's a good boy. You're actually saying to him, we are playing. Mm -hmm. But you're not, you're actually asking him to stop this. And that's not playing, you mean it, seriously. Because <laughs> that is what uh, Marlene is adding. She says, does it all also work with biting the legs? Yes, it does. But I know puppies go for the toes, especially if you're walking with your socks or barefoot and you start wiggling your toes. That is a very obvious invitation to bite. So if the dog is extremely bitey on your toes or your ankles, please just wear boots for a week, maybe. Yeah. Until he gets the hand signal. Mm -hmm. Most dog doesn't get it at once. Some does. You show it once and then just get it. Uh, some dogs, especially puppies and adolescents, their brain is under construction. They don't have all the neural pathways yet. So when you're forming neural pathways, it is important that you do the things you want to succeed with often or often enough and stay away from the pathways you don't want to keep. Good point. And also, <clears throat> so if it doesn't work the first time, should you keep on trying? How long should you, how many times should you be keep on trying this? As long as you need. If the puppy ha bites, show the hand signal. If it bites again, show the hand signal. If it bites again, show the hand signal. And also, as I said, you can add body cues, like just turning away a little bit. You take away the temptation. Uh, if it bites your toes, you don't want to have uh, shoes on. Put the, your feet up on the sofa. Keep them away. Tuck them under you. And for God's sake, don't wiggle them. Because <laughs> everything that moves, especially for puppies, right? It's an invitation, an invitation for play. Yeah. Yes. And they have to kind of, it's their instinct. They have to, to mm. move. Yeah. And but it's some... it's how a puppy discovers the world. He looks, he listens, he tastes, he touches, and he bites. Yeah. Yeah. And sniffs, of course. Everybody sniffs. But a puppy will explore with teeth and tongue. And it's natural, and it's a good thing, because and that is how they grow up. And that is how they get independent and uh, confident by exploring the world. Very good question. Sometimes when I use a hand signal, our dog starts barking. What should I do in that situation? Well, I, I would use a hand signal for the barking. Um, that actually raises a few questions. In what situations did you originally use the hand signal? And what have you done before? Immediately before. Okay. Yeah. So we just need to wait for her to-, to Because answer. sometimes if the dog is having fun and you are using the hand signal a little bit too harsh, then he might start barking because he thinks you're going to play with the abrupt mo movement you're making try to keep it as soft as possible as and also 
Mm. In my experience is that some might be a bit um, confused or frustrated in the situation. So they don't yes. know what you want. Yes. That could be. Uh, she wants to follow me. That's when she's using that signal. Yes. So then it's a conflict of interest. <laughs> if the dog has understood the hand signal and she understands that you don't want her to follow, but she really wants but she also really wants to be in your good graces and be a good girl for you. She wants you happy, but she also very much wants to follow. Then it could be something that calls for barking, uh, venting of frustration. Not necessarily, I, I don't know, but uh, and that is sometimes the case. And what can she do then? Does she have to walk in a different way or? use her body positioning or what can she, you do about it well if she's one who just jumps off the sofa and uh, runs her uh, runs for the door and then shows the hand signal then she has created an expectation if she moves slowly shows the hand before she gets up walk calmly to where she's going and if the dog is following maybe stop a second and use the hand signal again and also if the dog follows anyhow if he can't help himself let him because this is not an obedience exercise it is not a command you can't preset the parameters for this conversation the dog will answer as the dog see fit Usually the dogs are so eager to please. They really, really want you to be their happy human. So don't use it as a punishment or an obedience exercise. It's a suggestion. Please, I don't want you to follow me. Can you stay here in whatever fashion you want? Mm -hmm. If the dog is lying down on his mat on a queue, and you're leaving with a hand signal, maybe it's too much like an obedience exercise. I, when I give the hand signal when I rise up, I don't mean for the dog to stay put in a preset position. I'm just saying, don't follow. He might get up, he might follow me a few steps. He might go to another uh, spot to lie down or sit down or do anything. My main goal is, that is not following. So I will create as few conflicts of interest as possible. My only purpose is for me to be able to go to the toilet alone. Mm. And that is so important. It's so good that you mentioned. And I wrote down as well. It's first of all, it's it's a nice way you are explaining in your presentation that it's a choice of cooperation yes. and don't confuse it with uh, because the, the dog can choose where it wants to sit lay down lay on his back whatever position is just not to follow right so this yes. is not an obedience this is so important to and so so many people are so hung up about obedience mm -hmm. I say, oh, but I have to teach my dog to sit because if you're crossing a road, he has to sit. He doesn't have to sit. I don't bring a chair to sit down every time I wait for a green light. <laughs> I have some ugly words in my mouth. I try to spit them out. You just use the hand signal before you, and the dog will wait. He can wait at your side. He can choose to sit down. He can choose to stand behind you or in front of you anywhere but he's not going to walk into traffic and it's not going to walk on red light yeah you only need the hand signal for weight he doesn't have to perform any actions actually and that's why it's now i forgot <laughs> that's such a good question in my head yeah, uh, don't add a cue to it don't say anything right Exactly. Mm -hmm. Some people are very successful with the hand signal and they feel so empowered 
And then I start adding cues. Mm. <laughs> Why? Don't do that. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. It actually brings the dog back to zero. Yeah. Because you're, what you're actually saying in dog is, uh, waiter, wait, haha, <laughs> I was just kidding. Interesting how we can do so good with no fuss, which kind okay. of sums it up. Because we can use this instead of giving all the commands. Instead of stay, sit, don't go anywhere, don't touch, don't, don't. You know, we have so it's, many commands. It's force-free, fear-free, and fuss-free. Yeah. And a voice-free. Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I forgot my word. I had it. I was going to say it, and it disappeared. <laughs> Nope, lost. No, not coming back. No. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, that was what I was going to talk about. But uh, <clears throat> there's actually so few cues you need. You don't need the dog to lay on his mat to relax. You just need him to chill. Yeah. It's a hand signal. You don't need him to stay there and wait. You just need him to... Mm -hmm keep that approximate position <laughs> and if it doesn't a, comply it doesn't uh, matter <clears throat> it. i have got a question that i know that linda is going to have a lot to say about <laughs> mm -hmm. which is a very good question this is interesting question a lot of people a lot of people to calm dogs try to ask them to sit why does it make sense no not at all because uh, when you are in a sit, it's the reasoning is that uh, sit is not compatible with jumping <clears throat> or running or anything. So if you get the dog to sit, he will not do those behaviors. And that is true. But his need to do this behavior, his inner motivation is still the same. And when you ask him to sit, you bottle up his needs, you bottle up his inclinations, and you leave him in a very, very uh, precarious, no, vulnerable position. Because in a sit, he has no choice of moving away from something he perceives as dangerous or threatening or uncomfortable. And also because when you ask a dog to sit, some dogs will find it painful. Arthritic, old, and even certain breeds, like for example, a greyhound or a saluki with long thigh bones and short leg bones, they can't really sit properly without feeling it in their bodies. And, uh, and sit more than a few seconds, you will start to get this empty feeling in your legs, you know, when they fall asleep, as we call them in Norway. And it, it's really uncomfortable for so many dogs. For some dogs, sit is a completely uneventful <laughs> exercise in obedience. For some dogs, it doesn't matter at all. Like a Labrador usually will be able to sit quite happily and comfortable and may choose it by his own. But when he gets old and arthritic, he will have problems. And uh, to ask a dog something that is uncomfortable and put him in the position where he is afraid that there might be even more uncomfort. <laughs> What's that the word? Discomfort. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any more discomfort to come? Uh, then you're setting, putting me in a very, very vulnerable position. And that doesn't feel good for the dog at all. If you're using, for example, the hand signal, you're just telling him, I am taking responsibility for the situation. You don't have to worry. And actually, he doesn't. When he gets to that point, when he's familiar with hand signal, he knows what you want from him. And then he just relaxes because you are taking care of the situation. You are protecting him. 
you're not forcing him. I, I'm not saying that people are forcing or pushing their dogs into sit, but even with treats and praise and a lot of good things, it may still be very uncomfortable for dog. And I think, well, I haven't, I don't know, but the sit command is a very old fashioned. We used to, I, maybe it's all about control for yeah. us to feel we have control. And to have this immediate control when the dog is yeah. immobile. Yeah. He's not moving. Yes, I have control. And it's, we use it for so many um, useless things to sit before they get food, to sit before they get a treat, to sit before they get. Uh, being yeah. petted before we open the door oh in all these situations we yeah. just really have to stop doing that <laughs> okay so thank you very much linda oh my pleasure and i hope really that you people watching share this with your friends your dog friends so they can get the chance to at least try the hand signal because it's less stressful for us as well less talking and it's one of the many things we can do to make our being with our dogs more pleasurable, more pleasant, calm and relaxing, less stress. And that's the goal. Yeah. That's a goal we have. Yeah. That we have a nice communication that doesn't have a lot of preset parameters. Yeah. That the dog has to obey us or do as we want in very minute details. We just want to live happily with our dogs, don't we? Yeah. yeah. So, um, thumbs up for from anyone who wants Linda to come back. Linda is so good at explaining things in details. You're very good at, yeah, you, it's like your mother. Yeah. You're very good at explaining <laughs> things um, into the, in, in details and in a good understandable way. I like to listen to you as well. Thank you, Lisbeth. Thank you for your time, Linda. And maybe we'll see you soon here um, oh, yeah. or somewhere else. You have a Facebook page, don't you? Because you and your mother has um, a nice place in Norway called Unnelam. Yes. I will actually share the link to your Facebook page. It's yeah. in Norwegian, but you do speak English, obviously. And, and really we also have a website, Hundeland Nordvest. I will, I will post that in the links below so they can visit. And yes. if you're ever coming to Norway, this place is also situated in the west of Norway, the most beautiful area. Well, there's well, some of the areas. most famous attractions like it the is. Atlantic Road and the, the Trollstegen. So, ladders. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's it's a great um, uh, thing to. Uh, uh, yeah, you can contact us. You can come visit. Exactly. Come, go and visit. Now, <laughs> come play, <laughs> play in the rest environment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can actually meet Linda oh, and yeah. Tudid as well, and they can show you the hand signal. Oh, yeah. Okay. Have a nice weekend, Linda. I'll see you later this weekend, by Have the way. Have a nice weekend, everybody. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.